service. Say We don't want to bail out. We just want to get the These demonstrations and others like them across the nation on the same day are part of a concerted campaign by APWU against the biggest threat we have ever faced. I've been with the Postal Service for 27 years, and this is the first time for me personally that um, I'm worried. Well, we're out here rallying because we're trying to make the public aware and that they're trying to consolidate post offices, which is going to be actually a detriment. We're mad. We're scared. We're not going to put up with it. Our jobs are in jeopardy. We're fighting for our lives. Postal workers are on the go. A new government review finds the financial situation at the U.S. Postal Service has gone from bad to worse to much worse. The crisis facing the Postal Service has been in the news a great deal recently. Tomorrow, the Postal Service is expected to announce that its deficit has gotten worse. The Postal Service, which made a $900 million profit in 2006, is on track to lose $7 billion this year. There are also proposals to get rid of the workers' union and take away some of their federal benefits. This branch off Belmont Avenue on Guadalupe is one of some 3,700 offices nationwide being considered for closure or consolidation. The are other all these analyses and predictions just hype? Unfortunately, no. During the latest round of contract negotiations, APWU's economists privately confirmed a sobering truth. The Postal Service's financial situation was and is dismal. This chart from a pamphlet produced by APWU shows that USPS has suffered multi-billion dollar deficits every year since the 2006 Postal Accountability and Enhancement Act was implemented. And the situation gets worse each year. This sobering truth dictated our strategy on two fronts, in contract negotiations and on Capitol Hill. From the outset of bargaining, we said our priority was jobs, keeping the no layoff clause, bringing back work that had been subcontracted, winning back work that had been performed by managerial and supervisory personnel. We also sought to lessen the pain of accessing. We made significant progress on both fronts. We retained protection against layoffs, won major improvements in contract language covering subcontracting, returned work from supervisory personnel, and limited accessing to no more than 40 to 50 miles. We had to make some significant compromises, but we achieved some very important goals. Once the contract was ratified, we immediately turned our attention to Congress. Why? Because we knew that only a legislative solution could put the Postal Service on a firm financial footing and end the crisis that is being used to justify attacks on workers and on service. We started by making sure APWU members understood the true cause of the Postal Service's financial crisis, a provision of the 2006 law that required the USPS to pre-fund the health care benefits of future retirees. We did that by writing in-depth articles in our magazine, publishing timely updates in APWU news bulletins, posting frequent articles on www.apwu.org. And we prepared special pamphlets, like this one, which offers a thorough but easy-to-understand explanation of the problem. We've been working diligently for the last year since our contracts have been signed to educate our membership about what's going on, how they can be affected by these type of things. The legislative and political department worked tirelessly to put forth the union's position on Capitol Hill, meeting frequently with members of Congress and their staff. A major breakthrough for APWU occurred in early April when Representative Stephen Lynch introduced H.R. 1351. This bill would put the Postal Service on a firm financial footing by giving the USPS credit for billions of dollars in overpayments to its pension accounts and applying the credit to the pre-funding requirement. The National Union put out a call to get co-sponsors for H.R. 1351, and the locals and state organizations stepped up meeting with their U.S. representatives and asking them to sign on as co-sponsors. The legislation would address the overfunding problem and stabilize the USPS without laying off workers. 
To encourage APWU local members to write to their congressman, we sent this personalized mailer to every APWU member and retiree, even to non-members, to make it as easy as possible. The mailer included a tear-off card with the name and address of each recipient's representative. Tens of thousands of these cards were sent by the rank and file to their congressmen, urging them to sponsor and support H.R. 1351. In working to get a good bill like H.R. 1351 passed, APWU relies on the support of great congressional friends like these. Congress has to take responsibility for the fact that we're part of the problem. We're part of your problem. And we need to get off your back and release the creative energy we know you got to return the Postal Service to fiscal solvency. The postal workers didn't create this recession. The postal workers didn't put uh, arbitrary limitations on what the Postal Service can do. And the postal workers didn't require 100% prepayment of their pension fund. The only agency of the federal government required to do that. That's we right. need to give you some relief. Yeah. So you can do your job. So over and over again, what we hear on a daily basis in the committee, and by the way, I'm on the committee that deals with this issue, you know. We hear stuff about furloughs, cutting service, firing people, all those kinds of things. So I don't want anybody going around saying that it is the postal employee's fault that this has happened. A political reality that we have to deal with is that Republicans have controlled the U.S. House of Representatives since January of this year. Representative Darrell Issa, the chairman of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, has steadfastly refused to allow H.R. 1351 to come up for a vote. Issa says postal workers are nothing but soft assets that must be reduced. No matter what they say, they have more than a small cash flow problem. They have declining revenues and they haven't rationalized the hard and soft assets, hard assets being obviously uh, post offices, but the soft assets, which is 80% of their cost, are human beings. And if you've got too many human beings, you'll build in inefficiency, you'll use labor uh, poorly, and that's what's been happening, and it's why we have to get this right. It's why the postmaster is, uh, is asking for various authorities, including one that would allow him to let people go if he closes a post office. Still, APWU has kept urging lawmakers to sign on as co-sponsors. And APWU locals have been instrumental in this effort. When the USPS announced it would stop making payments into the federal employee retirement system, even though the USPS had overfunded the account by $6.9 billion, Representative Issa pounced. He introduced his own bill, H.R. 2309, which would require billions of dollars in postal cuts in just two years and which would abrogate postal union contracts. That is a bill filled with bad ideas. That is a bill that has a not-so-hidden agenda to downsize at any cost the number of people who work for the Postal Service and to break the backs of the public employee unions who represent them. That is not a worthy agenda. That has nothing to do with the crisis of the Postal Service. That's a different agenda, and it's one that ought to be rejected by every thinking member of the United States Congress. I am going to fight that tooth and nail on the Oversight and Government Reform Committee, and I'm going to work with Republicans and Democrats to fight that on the floor of the House of Representatives. In speaking out in support of his bill, ISA kept warning the public that the USPS was asking for a bailout. ISA's proposal basically wants to destroy collective bargaining. It wants to give the Postal Service the ability to close facilities without any review to adjust wages, salary, and benefits without any review. It's going to impact everybody because if they close post offices, they're going to have to double up in the next post office. Therefore, service is going to be hurt. And furthermore, it especially hurts our elderly and our poor who are without transportation and who can walk to their local post offices. APWU and many others have condemned the ISA bill as reckless and disputed the myth that the USPS wanted or needed a bailout. So APWU produced and ran this ad. 
Members of the American Postal Workers Union handle more than 165 billion letters and packages a year. That's about 34 million pounds of mail every day. Ever wonder what this costs you as a taxpayer? Millions? Tens of millions? Hundreds of millions? Not a single cent. The United States Postal Service doesn't run on your tax dollars. It's funded solely by stamps and postage. Brought to you by the men and women of the American Postal Workers Union. The ad had a profound effect. Virtually every news report after the ad aired pointed out that USPS doesn't rely on taxpayer dollars. The ad must have gotten under Representative Ice's skin because he publicly denounced it and asked the union to end the ad campaign. Of course, the union fired back, defended the ad, and refused to back down. Still, APWU continued to seek legislative support for H.R. 1351, and co-sponsors continued to sign on. Locals organized visits to their legislators' offices, and momentum continued to grow. In August, the USPS engaged in treachery. After defending the contract in Congress in April, the PMG began circulating proposals on Capitol Hill to abrogate our contract, to end protection against layoffs, and to take postal employees out of the federal retirement and health insurance programs. The union's response was swift and sharp. The union condemned the proposals and reiterated the call for Congress to address the cause of the Postal Service's problem. These proposals are outrageous, illegal, and despicable. We work very hard to, to allow the post office to adapt as quickly as they can and, and we did that in exchange for certain things, including keeping our health benefits the way they are. We also uh, uh, wanted to stay in the federal retirement system. All these things, the no layoff clause, all these things were talked about, and we achieved these, this collective bargaining agreement by giving up certain things. Now they want to come to the uh, Congress and say, oh, we got this part of the deal, give us this part back. We think that's totally improper. The fact of the matter, agreement is agreement. And this bill before ISA, that's the Postal Service, their, hand, their, their hands are over it, all over that. That bill came about after the Postmaster General visited his office. An attempt to undermine the union, he didn't deal in good faith, an agreement is agreement, and I don't care what he does, that agreement stays intact. Soon thereafter, the APWU launched a second ad. This one aimed at informing the public about the benefits of H.R. 1351. This time, we were joined by our brothers and sisters in the National Association of Letter Carriers and the National Postal Mail Handlers Union. The Postal Service is critical to our economy, delivering mail, medicine, and packages. Yet they're closing thousands of offices, slashing service, and want to lay off over 100,000 workers. The Postal Service is recording financial losses, but not for reasons you might think. The problem? A burden no other agency or company bears. A 2006 law that drains $5 billion a year from post office revenue, while the Postal Service is forced to overpay billions more into federal accounts. Congress created this problem, and Congress can fix it. But still, Representative Issa refused to allow H.R. 1351 to come up for a vote. Instead, he brought up H.R. 2309 for a vote by the Postal Subcommittee. Democrats on the subcommittee waged a great fight, but in the end, the vote was cast along party lines, 8 to 5. Together, the four major postal unions organized joint rallies in every congressional district in the country. Our goal was to tell the American people the real cause of the USBS crisis, thank co-sponsors of H.R. 1351 for their support, and ask legislators who hadn't signed on as co-sponsors to do so. The rallies were timed to take place just before the Postal Service was scheduled to make a $5.5 billion payment it had said it couldn't make, the so-called default. We have organized through Greg Bell's shop uh, 500 locations today, over 500 locations where we're having these type of rallies at various congressmen's offices. We want the people out all across the country to know which congressman will support them and which congressman will not support them. Because when they go back on the floor, they can talk amongst each other. Right now, today's a good day. You know, you have four unions, you have our elected officials, you have people from the community, you have people from all walks of life that are standing united with the postal workers, but they also stand united with 
the American people. Our struggle is, is not just the struggle of workers, it's the struggle of American people. In this situation, a theme, this appropriate theme, save America's postal service. All the unions are out here together again. We want to educate them. We want to thank the Congress, encourage the Congress, and let them know that the postal employees support their postal service. We take it personal. We're out in the neighborhoods day in and day out. We know the communities. We know the families. And we take this personal when somebody wants to dismantle this postal service. And it's not going to happen on our watch. For the first time in American history, I believe, in the postal history, we have all four unions cooperatively together, working together uh, on behalf of all postal workers so that we can save America's postal service for the American public. We have to work together to get the job done because folks, we are in a difficult day and time today in the postal service. So we again urge you for all of us to work together. If we don't unify and make this happen, the Postal Service has already put on the drawing board some of the more onerous proposals, such as cutting from six-day delivery to five-day delivery. They want to uh, trit 100,000 jobs through retirements. They want to then lay off 120,000 more people out of a 560,000-person workforce. The, the next part of their plan is to hire 120,000 temporary workers to replace the 120,000 they just laid off. So the consequences are dire if we don't get this thing moving. Uh, the support today was fantastic. It was great to see all the other crafts out here, the other labor unions, our brothers and sisters from the laborers. By all accounts, the rallies were a great success, getting our message to the American people, the media, and legislators. H.R. 1351 got four more co-sponsors that day, putting us over the top with a majority of the House listed as co-sponsors, including 26 Republicans. But we're still in the early stages of our struggle. Representative Issa's odious bill is an ongoing threat. APWU will continue to support H.R. 1351 and oppose H.R. 2309. And as we do, the members of the APWU will be key. If we all do our part, we'll beat back the real effort to destroy USPS. We'll keep sending out flyers, pressing the news media, writing articles, contacting congressmen, organizing rallies, whatever it takes. If we don't win this year, we had better win in 2012. After all, we're fighting for something important. We're fighting for our lives. 2012, it's, it's obvious, unless our people wake up to the pol political realities, this could be just like Wisconsin, where the public workers were blamed for everything. Let's all take away their unions, strip their uh, health benefits, uh, strip their insurance, take away all their uh, benefits and what have you, so the state can make money because they're not creating enough jobs for other people. Uh, we are so worried that in the next elections that Congress will turn to, to totally and to a, a group of people who want to destroy the working people in, the, in America. They want to take away the lives and the benefits. They want to take us back to the 12th century uh, where everyone said, uh, yes, my lord, no, my lady, and this sort of thing. And uh, that's critical that in this country that American people, the working people decide who runs these elections or who wins these elections. And the working people need to understand who their friends are. And that's what this is about. We're trying to make, at least make the postal workers aware of who their friends are. This is just the beginning. This is the starting point. The finish line is November 2012. Get involved, get ready, and get ready to vote.